So we just landed on Mars and it's not what I expected. and we are Class C Broads. We are full-time RVers who've been traveling in the country and landed in the Houston area. One place that we can't take our RV is space. So we headed to the Space Center Houston. Which at least for me was one of those bucket list places that we had to go to. The cost to get into Space Center Houston is about $30 per person. I'd actually been to the center way back in the early 1990s, and fun fact, it only cost about $10 per person back then. We're gonna do all of them. We're gonna take two trams, we're gonna see Mission Control, we're going to see the Astronaut Training Laboratory, we're gonna see the rocket, um, yard, park, rocket park, and then we're going to see the moon, and Mars, and the International Space Station, and I think we're geeking out. I'm tired just hearing about it. Of course, what you would expect to find in any good space museum would be an array of spacesuits. And my favorites were those worn by some pretty pioneering women. On display are some in-flight coveralls worn by Sally Ride, who was the first American woman in space. Fun fact, when I was little, I actually thought that the song Ride, Sally Ride was about Sally Ride, the astronaut. Ride, Sally Ride. I could see that. Yeah, but it's not about her. What's it about? I don't know, but it's not about her. <laughs> On display is also a flight training suit worn by Judith Resnick, who was the second American woman in space and a fellow 1978 classmate of Sally Rides. Resnick logged 145 hours in orbit, but died as part of the 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. Skylab. Now this was America's first space station. Skylab disintegrated as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere in 1979, but the Skylab training module is on display at the Houston Space Center. One of my favorite exhibits is actually outside. It's a NASA 905 aircraft with a replica independence shuttle piggybacking on top. That's super cool. What are you finding? It's one of the strangest sights in all of aviation. A 747 airliner piggybacking a 165,000 pound space shuttle. Who dreamed up this remarkable partnership of an airplane and an orbiter? Whose imagination solved the fully problem of returning the shuttle to its home base? Line it up, Lana. Line it up. The black box in a plane is orange. This rocket was made by Elon Musk's commercial SpaceX company and was used on two separate missions back in 2017. This was the first time NASA allowed a reusable rocket stage, which is really the future of space travel. So I think starting with Mercury 3, every manned NASA space flight has had a patch, and I think that the astronauts themselves design the patch and they get to have their names on it, which is pretty cool. The 
the Starship Gallery area of Space Center Houston is kind of a historical, chronological viewing of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions. And don't forget to look up because there's a lot of stuff on the ceiling. Let's start with the actual Mercury 9 space capsule that Gordon Cooper flew into space in 1963. There's a pseudo-creeping mannequin depicting Ed White becoming America's first man to conduct a spacewalk for a whopping 23 minutes in the Gemini 4 mission back in 1964. Gemini 5 was nicknamed 8 Days or Bust. This was the amount of time that it would take to get to the moon and back, and the actual Gemini spacecraft is on display at the center. There's a pretty amazing lunar diorama of the Apollo 17 mission to the moon. The American flag looks pretty much like it does on the moon because the astronauts attached a rod to the top of the flag to make it look like it was blowing in the wind. The exhibit also features a lunar roving vehicle which is pretty much like one of the handful that NASA has left at the moon after completing the Apollo missions. The actual command module from that last Apollo 17 flight is on display as well. What about the moon rocks? Yeah, I can't forget the moon rocks. What I think I loved about them from a chemical engineering perspective, which was my background, is that they had to keep them in these special nitrogen filled rooms because the oxygen in our atmosphere would degrade them. They had all of this technology back then that's on display like an old calculator and a camera that you know is so out of date but it's so fun to look at and see how far we've come with all our gadgets. I'm pretty sure that our smartphones take better pictures than the cameras they used back in the day. Sure. You don't have a lot of time there, but you do have time for one tram tour. Do the one to Mission Control. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So we just did Mission Control and it totally way over exceeded my expectations. I mean, it felt like it was in Mission Control live, it was like exciting. Hearing the recording of the original moon landing really got us excited about Artemis. And if you don't know what Artemis is, it is the future plans for going back to the moon, this time with the first female and the first person of color. And this is going to be done by the end of 2025. Fun fact, Artemis is the mythological Greek goddess of the moon and sister to Apollo. Another thing that I didn't want to miss was JFK's podium from his 1962 moon speak. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. chose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. So we just landed on Mars, and it's not what I expected. No one left me any potatoes. And it's cold. It's cold. But I weigh less. And there's no wind. I think that the movie was wrong because this says nothing about growing potatoes on Mars. It's about like spinach and strawberries and stuff. It doesn't say the potatoes were a good candidate. Mm -hmm. Mars is about a third of the gravity that we have here. So this is the thing. Got it. 3800. This is Earth. It's pretty 
heavy. Bars. Oh, yeah. Super strong on bars. Pro tip, download the Space Center Houston app. That will get you access to the virtual tram lines to go to the mission control and the training facilities. And it will also give you more information about what you're seeing. I recommend downloading it before you get there so you can get a little background and you don't have to mess with it while you're trying to do everything else when you first get there. We're going to the astronaut oh, training facility and to Rocket Park. The tram tour to the astronaut training facility was also pretty freaking cool. We saw all kinds of people working on quite a few different projects there and there was a lot to take in. You know, I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but we saw this one scientist working and not too far away from him was this stormtrooper helmet and I had to wonder what the heck was up with that. <sighs> <laughs> That's my best Darth Vader. <laughs> we did get to see them working on Valkyrie, and actually Valkyrie is the robot humanoid astronaut that they're working on for some upcoming missions. And Valkyrie was actually grabbing things, and so that was cool to see Valkyrie in motion. If you've been following the channel, you know that we are always looking for alligators and we found one where we least expected it, at NASA. On the tram tour. So we just learned that the Johnson Space Center is also an animal preserve, and the alligator has a name. Nico. Nico. The tram tour also took us to Rocket Park where there were two little rockets outside. Now hey, I wouldn't call them little rockets. Those things were huge. Well, compared to what's inside. Yeah, that Saturn V rocket inside was ginormous. It was so big. Yeah, and this video will not do it justice just seeing just how enormous this thing was. Incredible. We're no rocket scientists. Last off. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool though. our entire day at Space Center Houston. And of course, even in that time, we couldn't see and do everything. There are something like 400 different exhibits, artifacts to take a look at. So even if you would spend like one minute per exhibit, you're still not going to cover them all. So I decided to talk this one into going back to Space Center Houston, poning up another 30 bucks per person to see the Nighttime Galaxy Lights Holiday Exhibit. busy place.
Gleason is one of our favorite museums that we've ever been to. It gives you a look at the past, present, and future of space travel, which is pretty exciting considering what we're doing right now in that space. Ooh, and you know what else gets me excited? When you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Oh, nice one. Yeah, so we hope you enjoyed this video and remember whether you're on the road or on the web, stay, stay classy. classy. Cheers. Bye. See you in 10,000 light years. We're getting ready to go into Galaxy Lights. I'm super excited, not as excited as I would be if this was Rocky Pond in North Central Kansas, which is my favorite campground of all time. But you know, this will, this will sort of do. Oh, goodness. Uh, pro tip. <laughs> pro tip. I didn't know they had that kind of building. Well, the tram. Pretty exciting. It's kind of like walking, only slightly faster. Wave. Cheese. <laughs> it is a original NASA 905 aircraft. It's a bunch of lights. This looks like it's <clears throat> Project Artemis, but we think it looks like beer. Play that big beer. Yeah. All right there. Or cigarette. Whatever. Weather for uh, it's not good weather. Stuff. We're <laughs> we have not been saying good weather. <laughs>